Hello, welcome back to the Flow Arts Institute Fire Safety Video Series. My name is Dr. Howard Chen, and I'm the Director of Safety for the Flow Arts Institute. This video deals with the scientific aspects of the fabric and clothing materials that are commonly used in fire performance. Fire performers are no different than performers of other arts in that they seek well-made, protective clothing and costumes when they're practicing or performing their art. So let's talk about what makes fibers, threads, fabric, and costumes more or less fire resistant. So, there are several considerations when utilizing fabrics for their fire retardant or fire resistant properties. Let's name them. Number one, the fire burr content. Number two, the fabric weight and weave. And number three, the fit and the finish of the clothing. Before we get started with the details, I'd first like to address a common term which I think is used incorrectly. It's the term fireproof. Unfortunately, in the world of fire performance, there is no such thing as fireproof. It doesn't exist in cloth or fireproofing spray or any other barrier method. Unfortunately, the truth is that everything will burn or melt or degrade at some temperature given a long enough duration of exposure to fire. We should also clarify the terms fire retardant versus fire resistant. By definition, a fire retardant is a physical or chemical agent that reduces the flammability of a material. Fire resistance, on the other hand, is a measure of how long a substance can resist ignition or damage from being exposed to the fire. Okay, now back to our regularly scheduled programming. So let's talk about fiber content. Of the components of a fabric that determine its fire resistance, the fiber content, meaning what the threads are actually made of, is probably the most important factor. Fibers that make up clothing can generally be divided into two categories, natural fibers from plants and animals, and synthetic fibers, which are generally petroleum-based. So examples of natural fibers include leather, cotton, wool, silk, hemp, and bamboo. Examples of traditional synthetic fibers include nylon, polyester, acrylic, and rayon. You should be aware that a newer category of synthetic fibers, called the aramids, includes fibers familiar to fire performers, such as Kevlar, Nomex, PBI, and Carbonex. Let's compare the natural versus traditional synthetic fibers. In general, natural fibers don't catch fire easily and don't melt. When they are burned, they turn to ash. In comparison, however, the traditional synthetic fibers burn more easily, and most importantly, they can also melt. And when they melt, they carry the heat that it took to melt the fibers directly onto your skin and then hold it there. This sounds like a good setup for a severe burn, and unfortunately, it really is. And if that wasn't bad enough, the traditional synthetic fibers also create and hold on to more static electricity, which in the context of working with flammable fuels and vapors can create an unwanted ignition risk. So let me mention a bit about blended fibers and blended fabrics. Unfortunately, fibers that are inherent blends of natural and synthetic components, such as rayon, burn and melt just like traditional synthetic fibers. Now, if we talk about fabric and clothing made of different types of fibers, like an 80-20 blend of cotton and polyester, let's say, which you might find in a common t-shirt, you can expect that this kind of blended fabric will have fire resistance ca characteristics of both fibers in that most of the fibers will turn to ash and some of the fibers will melt. Let's now switch our attention to an exciting and more recently developed class of synthetic fibers called the aramids. The aramids, in comparison to the traditional synthetic fibers, or even the natural fibers, have some of the best fire-resistant properties and very few of the downfalls of traditional fibers. Fabrics made from aramid threads are not only quite strong and abrasion-resistant, but they are quite difficult to catch on fire and don't melt. In fact, when clothing made from aramid fibers is exposed to fire, the individual threads actually swell to close off the air spaces between them, and they form a carbonaceous char that's extremely difficult to ignite. So if you're keeping score via the fire tetrahedron, this type of fabric helps to remove oxygen and fuel from the equation. 
Now, while clothing made out of aramid fibers sounds like the perfect costume material for fire performers and fire safety personnel, please keep in mind that there are unfortunately some downsides to these fabrics. For one, even though they don't melt like traditional synthetics, repeated exposure to heat and flame causes the fibers to degrade and eventually become stiff and brittle. Most fire performers have already experienced this phenomenon with their Kevlar wicks, which are made from aramid fibers. Another problem, as you may imagine with all this high technology, is its high cost and general lack of availability in clothing. Although there are some manufacturers that have incorporated aramid fibers in various items of clothing, such as flight suits and car racing suits. So please see the end of this video for web links. Let's switch from talking about the fibers to talking about the characteristics of fabrics, another important component which affects fire resistance. One important factor is the weave of the fabric, and by this I mean how tightly woven together the individual fibers are. In terms of fabric weave, in general, the tighter the weave, the more protective it is against fire. And as you can imagine, when the fibers and the threads that make up the fabric are woven closer together, less oxygen can actually get to the individual fibers. And as we already know from the fire triangle and the fire tetrahedron, oxygen is an essential component of fire ignition as well as continued burning. Similarly, the weight of the fabric is important in determining its fire resistance. In short, the heavier the fabric, the more fire resistant the material. For example, while both silk and denim are made from natural fibers and inherently fire resistant, because denim generally has a higher fabric weight, the silk will ignite much quicker than the denim. So a quick way to test the tightness of the weave and the weight of any fabric is to hold it up to a bright light. If you can see the light through the fabric, the weave or weight of the fabric is likely insufficient for fire protection. Finally, how well the fabric fits against your skin is also a very important component in costume selection. Garments appropriate for fire performance and fire safety personnel are generally snug fitting as they prevent the buildup of oxygen underneath the clothing. So practically, they should be constructed so that they don't block vision or movement as well. Furthermore, sleeves and pants should not be overly long or floppy. And remember that dangling or fuzzy parts of clothing can easily catch fire as well just because of the high amount of oxygen surrounding the fabric strands. Well. What about fire retardant sprays? Fire retardant sprays can be useful in instances where you need extra ignition prevention. Now while these products delay ignition, it's important to remember that they do not actually protect against heat transfer. Thus, synthetic materials can still melt onto your skin and can even still burn you with their retained heat if exposed to flame or heat for a long enough period of time. Now it's tempting to think that a flame retardant spray can magically turn that awesome but very flammable costume that you want to wear into appropriate fire performing clothing, but really unfortunately that's just not true. Remember, eventually, almost any traditional fabric will catch on fire regardless of its fire resistant treatment. A few more notes about flame retardant sprays. They generally take up to 24 hours to cure on the fabric that's being treated and can also be washed out quite easily. In addition, most fire safety personnel are already using a tool treated with chemical flame retardant in the form of duvetine, which is a cloth commonly used to extinguish unwanted fire. Speaking of duvetine, let's talk a bit more about this common fire prop extinguishing fabric. It goes by several different names and spellings. For instance, it's variously known as commando cloth, stage cloth, molten fabric. It's an opaque brushed cotton fabric which comes in a multitude of colors, although you'll generally see it in black or red. It comes in multiple weights, but the most appropriate weight for use in fire performance is 16 ounces per linear yard. And as we spoke about before, it's treated with a water-soluble flame retardant chemical. And because of this, it's classified as a non-durably flame retardant cloth, which basically means that the flame retardant can't actually stand up to washing or very humid environments. So, for instance, if your duvetine gets soiled and you have to clean it, 
it's probably best to dry clean it. And if it gets washed, it must be retreated with flame retardant. Finally, when buying duvetine, make sure that it's flame retardant to National Fire Protection Act 701 standards. One important factor to note is that while it's treated with a fire retardant, that doesn't actually mean that it's not flammable. With just a spritzing of fuel and an ignition source, the duvetine itself can catch fire with disastrous results. And in addition, and especially with lesser weights of duvetine, and incomplete cutting off of the oxygen supply, watch for flames burning through the weave of the fabric when you're using it as a flame suppression tool. So, let's summarize the topics that we talked about. In terms of fibers and threads, the most fire protective fibers are the aramids, like Kevlar, Nomex, or Carbonex, followed by the natural fibers, like cotton and wool. The least protective, and probably the most dangerous fibers, include the traditional synthetic fibers, like polyester and nylon. In terms of fabrics, the thicker fabrics and those with tighter weaves are the most protective against fire and heat transfer. Furthermore, clothing with a snug fit, appropriate length sleeves and pants, and smooth clothing without tears or bells and whistles are less likely to ignite. Now the most important thing to remember is that there is no fabric that is fireproof, just fabrics that'll protect you from burning longer than others. And in a sense, they're really just buying you time. And just because your skin is protected from igniting, it doesn't mean that the heat from the fire won't transfer through the clothing and still burn your skin. Now for more information on the fire resistance of fabrics and fire retardant chemicals, please check out our links section at the end of this video or on our website. All right, well that's it for this segment of the Flow Arts Institute Fire Safety video series. For information on fire suppression using fire extinguishers, please check out our next video segment. For the Flow Arts Institute, I'm Dr. Howard Chen.